NASCAR season is here. Drivers and fans have come through Pocono Raceway in the Lehigh Valley once already, and they're coming back later this summer. But why does NASCAR and auto racing have such a big following? And what does that mean for our region with Pocono Raceway and Dover in our viewing area? What economic benefits are there? And what is the history and importance of auto racing? I'll be joined by Zach Sterniolo of the Pocono Record and ESPN Poconos to break down those questions and more. That's all coming up right here, right now. I'm Sam Chen, and this is Face the Issues. Good evening and welcome to Face the Issues. I'm Sam Chen. NASCAR season is upon us again. Drivers and fans have come through Pocono Raceway in the Poconos and Lehigh Valley region once already, and they're coming back later this summer. Now, auto racing is one of those things that most people are either love it or they don't understand it, but no one can deny the impact that it has on the cities where these fans and drivers go. And that includes this region right here with Pocono Raceway, the former Nazareth Speedway, with Dover in our region. There's a lot that goes on with auto racing and NASCAR. And I'm excited to introduce Zach Sterniolo of the Pocono Record and ESPN Poconos to discuss what that impact is. Zach, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me on here, Sam. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. Um, quickly, you are a, both a sports reporter and a columnist for the Pocono Record. You write a column called Zach's Turn, That's right? right? Zach's Turn it is, a, it is a NASCAR column That's in right. the record. And you also host uh, Side by Side, which is a podcast on ESPN Poconos. And that's also a NASCAR-based podcast. That's right. right. Great. Well, we, are at, we have the expert in the house, so thank you for being here. Um, let's talk. I, I said this in the intro, and auto racing in general, NASCAR specifically, this, it, it's a big thing. Everyone knows about it. But it, your fans are very committed, and then there's a group of people who may or may not follow it, and then there's a group of people that just – they aren't really aware of it. They're not always aware of when the season starts. It's very different from other sports. Uh, so let's, let's kind of take it from the top, uh, just because our viewers will be all over the place on this one. When we talk about auto racing, it's not just NASCAR. What are the different forms of auto racing? What's the difference between them? Are the seasons the same time? What, what's the overview? Sure. Well, NASCAR is kind of the premier stock car series mm -hmm. in the country. Um, they'll, they'll start their season in February. Really, they'll race from about Valentine's Day all the way down to Thanksgiving in November. Wow. And um, there, there's so many different facets in between there. Um, but that's stock car racing. The, that's, those cars are based off of, right now, it's the Ford Mustang, the Chevy Camaro, and the Toyota Camry. And yeah. um, then you have IndyCar is kind of the, at least in the U.S., the premier uh, open-wheel style racing uh, where... Um, you have Chevrolet and Honda, and those cars are essentially what you see in the Indianapolis 500. That's mm -hmm. Memorial Day Sunday. That's the, kind of the big American race. Um, I know the Daytona 500 is NASCAR's trademark in February. That's where they start their season. Right. And that's, that's called the, the Great American Race, right. but uh, the Indy 500 has a very special place in American history. Sure. Um, and, so, um, and then internationally, you get into Formula One, mm -hmm. um, and that... I mean, that series has its own massive history, with, certainly with guys like Michael Schumacher, mm -hmm. Mario Andretti. Um, the, the list of names in that uh, realm go on and on, certainly. And they race internationally. Those cars race on different road courses, street courses, mm -hmm. um, with tight turns, many turns, whereas NASCAR stock car racing prim primarily focuses on oval track racing. Okay. And even within NASCAR, there are different series, right? Because I remember there's the NASCAR Truck Series, or at least there was at one point. There are two different series just within the stock car racing, correct? So, So within stock car racing, at least within NASCAR's mm -hmm. national umbrella, they have three national series which tour um, the whole country. And the Premier Series, of course, is the NASCAR Cup Series. Mm -hmm. 
Then you have their second tier series, which is the NASCAR Xfinity Series, which essentially you look at that as kind of a triple A baseball okay. kind of comparison. Okay. That's the best way. That's the best analogy I can think of for that. Um, and then right beneath that would be the uh, Gander Outdoor Truck Series, like you alluded to, um, and um, m much like a double A of okay. baseball, where, where a lot of the young drivers really get their first starts. On the national touring series, do they do do drivers jump in NASCAR? Do they jump between the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series? They do, not as much as pre as prior years. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually been rules implemented to prevent that. Okay. Um, really, you look at a guy like Kyle Busch, mm -hmm. who has um, dominated all three series throughout his career. Um, came into the Cup Series in 2005, mm -hmm. but that didn't stop him from going back and, and racing in those quote-unquote lesser series. Sure. Um, I, even you, you look at, but even before Kyle Busch got involved, Mark Martin was known for his success in the Busch Series, mm -hmm. um, at, which at that time was sponsored by Busch. Now, right. of course, Xfinity. And um, so that's something that's always been prevalent, but now um, there have been a lot of people, a lot of fans who dislike when a cup driver goes down to what they see as cherry picking sure. um, and, and rack up a whole right. bunch of wins there. Um, so now there are rules where um, a, a, a full-time cup series driver is limited to maybe five or seven races. Sure. I think it's seven races per year in the Xfinity series and five races per year in sure. the truck series. So that would almost be like the, the you know, major league baseball star, take Bryce Harper, for example, who, with the Phillies, who suddenly decides, I'm just going to play for the Iron Pig so I can win more hitting titles. <laughs> in it, a it, sense, <laughs> in a sense, yeah. Um, but that's what makes auto racing so different is that there are so many, uh, these drivers are so wrapped up in just wanting to be in the car, wanting sure. to get track time. And a lot of times the Xfinity Series and Cup Series race on uh, the same weekend. So you'll okay. have the Xfinity Series race um, at the same venue right. uh, on Saturday, and then the Cup right. Series will have their race on Sunday. So um, the timing always makes sense for that. Um, it's just a matter of fans not necessarily wanting to see sure. um, some drivers go down. But the reason uh, that a lot of those Cup drivers go down is to help their teams with sponsorship. Sure. Because sponsors want the big names in their Saturday mm -hmm. car to showcase their product there right. uh, against some of the other um, competitors and as well as draw eyes to them again on Sunday. Right. And that's the biggest thing with, with NASCAR, right? The sponsorship is, is much more visible than in other sports, such Absolutely. as basketball or baseball. Um, they, they say to understand NASCAR and to understand auto racing in general, it's not just the drivers. In fact, it's probably to really understand it, you've got to understand the fan base. This is a fan base that travels, and we'll talk about the, the impact to the to the economy and to the region. What is so different about the fan base than, say, uh, you know, professional baseball or professional hockey or something like that? When you look at teams in the NA, uh, the NBA, the NHL, mm -hmm. the NFL, those teams are located in a certain locality, whether it's New mm -hmm. York City or or Dallas or Denver, mm -hmm. wherever those teams are based in one spot and you know they're going to be quote unquote home games right whereas in nascar it is essentially a traveling circus where they mm. travel the circuit um from destination to destination where they will only like the ma the maximum amount of visits you will see them hit one venue is three times per year okay uh, which at this point is charlotte motor speedway in sure. north carolina because they have the all-star race there as well as the coca-cola 600 on mm -hmm. memorial day sunday and uh, another race during nascar's playoffs in the fall okay everywhere else has a maximum of two races and Poconos two correct poconos two dover is two uh, and then you have tracks like fontana california that are one race one. per year uh and even atlanta so um I think that's that's the biggest thing where, where fans are, if you want to go to multiple races per year, or at least more than two races per year, you're going to have to travel. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to find a way to justify, all right, yeah, I can make that eight-hour road trip um, and pay for the lodging, pay for the, the experience of a weekend um, and the tickets, yeah. and then also have to understand that you're going to make that eight-hour drive back the other way. So it, it's, it's a lot, um, and that's part of the, I, I think that's been part of the problem where um, you certainly can't deny 
there's been a, a, a dip in ratings mm -hmm. over the last few years and a dip in attendance. Um, I think that's played a, a major role in it because families are spending money on gas and sure. lodging to get there. But it's a passionate, passionate fan base. Right. The, the ones who are willing to make that time commitment and that financial commitment, mm -hmm. they will find a way to get to the racetrack, especially if they've got the camper to go ahead and stay in the infield from Thursday night to Monday morning. Right. Right, that's actually my next question. So you go to Pocono, a lot of our viewers will, will go to Pocono, and it's first of all, it's three days. So it's not just, oh, here's a game day, people line up with tickets. They are there multiple days, and then before the big race Sunday, fanfare, and you've got thousands of people who are visiting vendors, and you know there's stock cars that they can sit in, and there's things for, for all the major race race car drivers there's things for the past race car drivers you can go and you'll still see things for jeff gordon and for dale earnhardt who's not just retired but has passed away for danica patrick you'll still see these things there's no way all of those fans are from pocono no absolutely not how well does this fan base travel it travels very well um, you get a lot of people from certainly the new york uh city metropolis area mm -hmm. coming out because Pocono Raceway is the closest connection sure. to the city. Yeah, they're not uh, racing the city. <laughs> no, 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 certainly not. Um, so you get a lot of fans, certainly from northern New Jersey, the New York area, um, New York State, um, even western Pennsylvania will come out to Pocono Raceway because for a lot of them, it is their closest mm -hmm. connection. Um, some, there's also Watton's Glen um, sure. International, which is in upstate New York, mm -hmm. um, and so, some of those fans will make the drive down to Pocono to see a race, some of them will just go to the to Watton's Glen, which that in itself is a unique racetrack because that is a, a road course um, where you have so, uh, left and right turns. Um, so the, the fan base travels well, and uh, I think that, that really helps expand the economy of uh, the Poconos whenever they're in town, sure. or really whatever, whatever city they're in that particular weekend. Absolutely. We will come back and, and talk about that more in depth. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issues. Zach, thank you again for taking the time to be here. We left off talking about the fan base, and I want to talk about how this fan base impacts the region and impacts the economy. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was they travel really well. And when I get asked about NASCAR and how, how to describe the fan base, and, and I very much, I didn't grow up with the culture, I very much viewed it from the outside. Um, hosting the governor at Pocono was quite an experience. I've always likened it to Comic-Con and all the, the comic book geeks and nerds that would travel from San Diego being the big ones like Daytona, but then travel to all the big cities and following all the celebrities through Comic-Con. You've been a part of this NASCAR culture. You report on it. You are right there in the driver's seat, pun intended. How do you describe that fan base and the importance of that fan base to the sport, but also to the region? Well, the fan base is critical to the sport and you see that more maybe now than ever. Um, a few years ago, NASCAR made just a ton of changes mm -hmm. to the format of how they crown a champion, how they go about a, creating a playoff system about 15 years ago now, and it, it alienated a lot of the local fans, mm -hmm. but also on the national scale, the diehards who had been paying attention to it from the time that they were a kid. And NASCAR has realized they pushed away a big portion of their fan base, which in, in large part, is very blue collar. It's mm -hmm. very, um, the, the, it's sh surely a predominantly rural uh, sp sport as far as the fans are concerned. Um, you don't you don't hear a lot of NASCAR in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Um, it, but uh, to the same token, you, you NASCAR has tried to widen itself into those markets to to brand itself a little um, to where they don't want to push away the, the country aspect mm -hmm. of it, but they want to, they want to invite everyone into it. Sure. Um, so the diehards tend to be still at this point very much blue collar, and I think that makes a big difference in, in what they're trying to attract. Sure. What are the big, you mentioned Dover, uh, Watkins Glen, Charlotte obviously is, is the hub, Daytona is the big race of the year. What are the other big cities where NASCAR goes? Certainly Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Charlotte has been really um, predominant for NASCAR throughout mm -hmm. its history. Okay. Um, hosts its longest race of the season annually, mm -hmm. uh, 600 miles. Um, and so many of the teams are based around the Charlotte area. Okay. So uh, that's a big race on the NASCAR schedule for them. 
Indianapolis obviously has a rich racing history. Mm-hmm. Um, the fans haven't really been showing up there for a while now just because the racing product on track uh, on track has not been as entertaining as NASCAR sure. would hope it would be. Sure. Um, but certainly, you look at venues like Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. They've just recently picked up a second race on the their schedule for the year. Um, Fontana is just maybe an hour outside of Los Angeles, California. So that's a very key market. And really, Pocono is as well. I know we mentioned that a little bit, too, with its connection to New York City. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of different places on the map, even Chicago, um, where NASCAR makes an economic difference. When you look at this region and you live in the Poconos, um, obviously Pocono Raceway, Dover is not that far from here. Uh, that's a big spot. You've covered Dover. Yes. Nazareth Speedway. Uh, in its past was a big spot. And then you look, there was a speedway in Trenton, uh, Langhorne, Flemington. The, the history of NASCAR and of auto racing in general has been crucial to this region. What do you see as the impact that it's had? I think you, you look at the impact as how many fans can the sport attract to this destination, uh, and especially at Pocono twice a year. Mm. Um, and if you factor in IndyCar, that's a third weekend now that they've had uh, since 2013. Are they at Pocono? They are at Pocono. Oh, okay. IndyCar comes to Pocono this year, August 18th. Okay. And so when you have all of these different racing fans converge on this one specific venue over the course of a, let's say, five days mm-hmm. span, that those fans are spending money within the area, within the county, mm-hmm. um, and within the resorts, the sure. shopping centers, certainly up in the Poconos and Monroe County, you've got the crossings, you've got Kalahari resorts, mm-hmm. there's Camelback um, or uh, with all of their uh, Camel Beach stuff. Mm-hmm. So there are so many different areas for fans to really venture out into and explore the, the community and the nature. And so that, that automatically pumps more money into the area. Why, why do you think this area is so rich when it comes to all the racing history? We, we said two races for NASCAR, now a third race with IndyCar at Pocono. Nazareth Speedway played a big role. Sure. Uh, n- and not that long ago, even to the 2000s. That's right. Uh, Dover's not far from here. What about this region is so special to the all the racing world? I think it's just a great destination. Number one, there's so many different uh, people that this region impacts. Mm-hmm. There's so many different kinds of people within the area that um, that these that, that NASCAR that IndyCar that they want to attract and they want to bring into the fold and so for me what makes the most impact here at, in our area is that there are so many different people within mm-hmm. the region but I mean that, that's a good point right because there is, there's not just a lot of people and there is a lot of people but it's not as condensed as say a New York City right but it's also a very diverse group of people yes. to your point um, do, do you live in the Poconos. Do you see the economy there? I mean, to you, what happens if racing leaves the Poconos? If racing leaves the Poconos, there's a big hole to fill. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll see that start in 2020 because NASCAR is going to host its first ever double header weekend where they're actually going to have two cup races on back to back days. They'll wow. have the cup race on Saturday and a cup race on Sunday as opposed to just one cup race in June and one cup race in July. So when you look at that, you're automatically taking one weekend out of the One whole weekend, right. Correct. Because they come for the whole weekend. Correct. So that's going to make a big difference as we head into 2020 as far as the impact on the the resorts uh, because that's – you're at least – probably 50,000 people yeah. you're taking out of one weekend here at right. Pocono. So are they doing, so Pocono will still have two races, but they're going to occur on the same weekend. Correct. Correct. And so that weekend, uh, what they're going to do is, what they've done in, uh, since 2014 is in June, they would have the Xfinity Series race on Saturday Correct. and the Cup Series on Sunday. And in July, they would have the Cups, I'm sorry, the Truck Series on Saturday and the Cup Series on Sunday. Okay. Next year in 2020, you're going to have the, the Truck Series race on Saturday before the Cup race, and then on Sunday you're going to have the Xfinity Series race before the Cup race. So We're you'll get four, four races, races yes, in, in two eight, days. Correct. Correct. So as far as value goes, it, it's really bar none. Sure. 
But when you look at the economic impact, certainly mm-hmm. on on the area, um, I think that will make a big difference. Um, I know the raceway is eager to fill that weekend, um, or at least another weekend with mm-hmm. entertainment um, of what sort. No one really knows at this sure. point, but um, you have to imagine it, it would have to be big to fill that kind of a void. Agree, agree. So the fans probably love this because they only have to do one weekend. Correct. But the, for the region, this is this could be a negative impact. It, it might be. Um, I I don't really know if it will or will not be yet. I don't really know if anyone sure. does. But uh, it's certainly going to be different. Um, it could be for the better or it could be for the worse. I think it certainly for the sport, it, anything, anything different is good. Sure, sure. But again, for the area, um, different could be bad. We'll have to see. Uh, this, uh, I want to ask you about what probably is um, welcome news for the region and also welcome news for fans. Welcome news for NASCAR. Uh, about five years ago, uh, I was actually there with Governor Corbett during the announcement that they were expanding the roads that are leading into Pocono. And I, I just, you would never have thought that road work would get such thunderous <laughs> applause, but it went nuts at Pocono Raceway when the governor announced that they just cleared all the funding to get to expand the roads. Why is that such a big deal for Pocono? It's such a big deal because the raceway is located right off the Blakesley exit of Interstate 80 Mm -hmm. up there in Monroe County. And once you get off the exit, it's just a two lane road, Route 115. uh, And that's it. That was your only way in and essentially your only way out. And so now to know that that road widening project is in the works Right. right now, they've cleared they're, they've cleared some of the trees for that now. They haven't really started on the road aspect of it yet, but the, the room is starting to be made up there. And that's going to make a huge difference for parking uh, because okay. it, 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 parking at, at Pocono is free, has been free for as far as, I, as long as I can remember. Um, but you would typically have to wait an hour just to get back to the highway. And it's only three, three miles wow. from the interstate. So <laughs> it, wow. it's, a, it's a very painful <laughs> kind yeah. of way to exit. A lot of fans would just tailgate at their cars and, sure. and throw on the grill or, or, or whatever, but um, it should certainly expedite uh, traffic both in and out, in and out. Um, from Long Pond. Welcome news. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issues. Zach, thank you for shedding light on the racing world, NASCAR world but also the impact that it brings to every city it goes to, but especially to our area here between Poconos and Dover and and all the other racing activities going on. I want to close out and ask you about a bit of a hometown hero in this area, a legend. Obviously, the Andretti family is a big name in this area. He's hailed as a local legend, Mario Andretti, and then his his kids, and, and I think even his grandson now is racing. When you, If you grew up in Lehigh Valley like I did, you know the name. What does the Andretti name mean to racing outside of the Lehigh Valley? Well, Mario Andretti left such a prominent legacy in anything and everything that he raced. He is one of very few drivers who ever won both the Indianapolis 500 and the Daytona 500. Mm -hmm. He's won Formula One Grand Prix. Um, He still owns, um, or at least co-owns, the Andretti Autosport team in IndyCar, um, which is really run now by his son, Michael Mm -hmm. Andretti. Um, who had a lot of success in IndyCar as well. To your point, Marco Andretti, who is Michael's son, is still competing full-time in the IndyCar series. So the, the imprint on the motorsports world is really bar none by, by just one family, certainly. Right. Uh, and especially when you look at the fact that um, they all grew up here in Nazareth area. Um, I, I believe Marco went to Notre Dame Green Pond, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. so um, just to have that local imprint here um, really touch a global uh, atmosphere like the motorsports world, it's, it's really been um, amazing to see and watch. Sure. Set this in perspective for me. You, you mentioned that Mario Andretti won the NASCAR, he won the IndyCar, and he won the Formula One. How many drivers cross between those three? We talked about crossing in between the different NASCAR series. How many actually cross between the th- those three different brands of racing? You certainly look at a guy like A.J. Foyt, who was prominent um, throughout the 70s and 80s. Um, more recently, you look at a guy like Juan Pablo Montoya. Okay. He mm-hmm. won um, the Indy 500 twice. He ended up uh, winning multiple Formula One races. 
Um, and then he even came to NASCAR and won in his rookie year at the road courses. Never uh, found success on the ovals, but mm -hmm. he was also really prominent in that. Um, and then as far as IndyCar and NASCAR specifically, you can look at guys like Tony Stewart, um, Robbie Gordon, John Andretti, guys along sure. those lines um, really making an impact. That's great. Zach, thank you for taking the time and joining us and breaking this all down for us. My pleasure, Sam. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. That is all the time we have tonight. My thanks to Zach Sterniolo of the Pocono Record and ESPN Poconos for breaking down the world of NASCAR and auto racing and especially the impact that it has on our region. That is all the time that we have, but join us again next week as we continue this conversation. Until then, you can continue this conversation online. Just remember to use the hashtag FaceTheIssues. My name is Sam Chow. On behalf of all of us here at Face the Issues, thank you and good night.